welcome <laughs> to another episode. That was really good. I like that. Thank you. To another episode of Lyrical Breakdown, yeah. episode number six. Yeah. I'm Brad. And I'm Lisa. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> I'm very excited about today. I guess so. Can you tell? Super excited. <laughs> All right. So today we're doing Big White Gate. It's a song by Grace Potter and the Nocturnals. Um, the songwriter was Grace Potter herself. This album came out in 2007. It was titled This Is Somewhere. And her genre is, they said rock, but it's more kind of bluesy. Uh, I mean, bluesy well, rock. Bluesy rock kind of started out that way. And then it went more like maybe mm-hmm. rock pop. And right. then now it's kind of Definitely originated back very again. bluesy. <laughs> yeah. so, so what made you choose this song? Well, I didn't choose it. You chose it. You I said, didn't? I really like this oh, song, Lisa. How about that? And so I put it into the rotation, Brad. Oh, all right. Yeah. Well, good choice, Brad. <laughs> it is a good song. It is. I really like it. It's, a, it's another story song. It's just got a good story to it. Mm-hmm. I like songs like that. I'm attracted to songs that make me, you know, kind of think. And you can reflect on your own self when you listen to a song like right. this. And it's, I think that's just super cool. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm excited. I like her a lot. Um, we discovered her many know, moons many ago. Many moons ago, yeah. We saw Austin City Limits yep. live, mm. and she was singing off of the um, album. Oh, I don't remember I what, it was what the name was. It was her first album, or the first popular album, in a way. Yeah, I'm I don't like the song I remember is "Nothing But Water." Something like that. Yeah, and it was really good though. I liked the album. I went out and bought it, and then. Mm-hmm. Um, in this one. But they were really good live. I mean, she was really a singer. The band was really good. It's Grace oh, yeah, we Potter and the we Nocturnals. Got to see them live. Oh, so yeah, good. The Nocturnals was her band name. No, it was Grace Potter and the Nocturnals. That's what I just said. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was really good. We saw them We saw them live, and um, it was, mm-hmm. I think, was it in the We've seen them live. It was... Or was it in the fall time? Might have been like the fall time. I don't think it was dead of winter. I don't think so either. It was in a small little bar yeah. down in Minneapolis. We and kind I, of, um, they had tables in the back. So we kind of yeah. went back there so we could have a table to kind of leave. It was pretty place. much just after their what, second album came mm-hmm. out. Yeah, they, they were still pretty new. They yeah, weren't. Uh, most people didn't know of them. Yeah, they weren't major label yet. So. Mm-hmm. But they rocked it, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. It they was were, a good one. Yeah, they were very good. So the drink of the day is all right. This is an another experiment. can of beer. Yeah, it is from Third Street Brew House. It's called Cool Beans. Cool Beans Imperial Coffee Porter. Yeah, they they have the story. Can I mm-hmm. read the story? I'm gonna read the story. Okay, you just stole my thunder. That's cool. Oh, you want to read it? No, you can read it. Were you planning on reading it? You're fine. <laughs> I'll make it. I'll be all right. Okay. <laughs> Cool Beans is a robust imperial coffee porter brewed with coffee beans from Muggy's Beans, a local roaster in St. Cloud, Minnesota. These Sumatra beans are cold pressed into a sweet con- concentrate, then combined with our roasted chocolate malts, producing a big blend you'll soon be buzzing about. Cool Beans exhibits a rich dark brown color and a bold coffee aroma with a smooth roasted flavor. We call it cool beans, but you'll call this cool liberation, warm and fuzzy deliciousness. Is that the right? Is that? I'm glad the right I let word? you read it. I know what is cool. Laboration. Laboration. I don't know. Warm and fuzzy deliciousness. Now we'll I'm kind of scared later. because um, we gave a can to his mother on the way down here, and she tried it. <laughs> she, like, I don't think she liked it. Is it is a 9.1 percent alcohol. Holy crap! So it's a very strong. No, she's probably wasted by now. <laughs> it's a it's a really cool can. I um, like it. Yeah, and we did a really cool um, photo shoot with it, so I'll put those on Facebook, yeah. and Instagram. They're re- it's I all about the beer. It says. So let's try this. I'm a little nervous. I am nervous too. I don't really like beer to begin with. So, but oh, cheers Oops. here. Here, that flew out everywhere. That's right. I'm supposed to do that. Hmm. Here we go. Bottoms up. That's not bad. 
It's almost more chocolatey than it is being like coffee ish, I think. I don't taste any coffee. I have a, like, there's definitely like a hint more of a chocolatey vibe to it. Well, it did say chocolate. Yeah. I expect it to be more. I guess the aftertaste, I can get a coffee. I get a little bit. Hmm. I don't know if I like it though. I wish we had a glass because I want to, it does look pretty dark in the can. When you're looking in the dark can. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can't, so, you can't make me laugh when I have a mouthful of fluid. It's not bad. I don't mind it. It's a. Uh, I am. I mean, it's a porter, so porters are always. I'll probably finish it, thicker. but I'm not gonna have another one. Well, good because I don't have another one for you to have. <laughs> you do. You have. Yeah, you have one more can. You can have that one. I don't mind it. Yeah, that's good. All right. Try it. Go out and. I don't know if you if, like a darker I, beer. Just... I don't know if it's a local one. I mean, like it's Minnesota. Yeah. Brewed. So I don't know. Can you get those like? Probably not. Just states. fly to Minnesota, <laughs> find this, and buy it and drink it. When it came in a four pack. The cities so. of Minneapolis, you can go find it and try it. Right. If you like a darker beer. Oh, I don't. Mm. Okay. Ooh, excuse me. Wow. It's got a little. It does. A little thing there. All right. So the lyrics to Big White Gate. All right. You ready? I am ready. Okay. You're going to read the lyrics now? Yeah, I'm going to read them. Even sure. though every time I want to do it, I want to sing it. So it might sound funny because I keep wanting to sing it. Well, just let it out. If, if you feel it in <sighs> your soul. Yeah. And just... Well, I should have downed the whole can of beer and then maybe. Ready? Ready. My body's aching from laying in this bed. I went singing in the rain and the cold got to my head. I don't know who's playing, I just know what the doctor said. Eighty-four years of a sin in life, and in the morning I'll be dead. I had three daughters, a new man for every one. And the only man that I ever loved left me with my only son. I was a no-good mother, I was a no-good wife. There's only one thing that I did right in this God-forsaken life. So St. Peter, won't you open up the big white gate? Cause I heard about forgiveness and I hope it ain't too late. No, I ain't no holy roller, but you go and tell your king that all the folks up in heaven might like to hear me sing. I sang to my children before they strayed so far. I sang for my lover or a nickel in a tip jar. I never knew Jesus. I never read the good book. But on my day of dying, I'm giving life a second look. So St. Peter, won't you open up the big white gate? Cause I heard about forgiveness and I hope it ain't too late. No, I ain't no holy roller, but you go and tell your king that all the folks up in heaven might like to hear me sing. Yes, they would. It's coming on time now and my body's getting cold. I've got no will. I've got no prayer. My story's all been told. I'm ready for the land of fire, but I'd love to see the land of gold. So nurse, bring me my guitar. One more song before I go. So St. Peter, won't you open up the big white gate? Cause I heard about forgiveness and I'm hoping that it ain't too late. No, I ain't no holy roller, but you go and tell your king that all the folks up in heaven might like to hear me sing. Yeah, all the folks up in heaven might like to hear me sing. Good job. Thanks. You're welcome. I really do like how she sang this song, though. Yes, I mean, that's like, there's times where doing the breakdowns like this i really enjoy the fact that you don't hear the song mm -hmm. but then there's certain ones like this like the way she sings it just really oh it's so good yeah portrays She's... the story like just yeah. the way it's really good so make sure you listen to it you have to listen to this song and preferably other songs... the recorded version is very good there's a couple really good live versions out there too mm -hmm. on youtube but you can the recorded one is just yeah it's perfection it is so so now there's no hidden riddles and stuff in this song. No, not really. But it's... Written really well. It's just written well. Like I said, it tells a story. Just some things I like to talk about. And so yeah. let's go through it. Well, right off the gate, she's like, my body's aching from laying in this bed. Yeah. So, I mean, can we can all relate, though. I mean, well, even without being... 
I think she's, I mean, she's dying, so I it's probably a little that. bit different. I get that, but there's times where I think I'm dying in the morning, too. <laughs> I'm getting old. But it sets the whole tone for the it song. Does. My body's aching from laying in this bed, so you, yeah. she's old. She's in the hospital bed. Or in a uh, nursing home or whatever, but, you know, you lay a lot in right. bed when it's towards the end of your time. So, like, I get it. So right off the bat, though, she's like... Yeah, it's and the next the verse kind of like... <laughs> I went singing in the rain and the cold got to my head. So I don't know if that's like literal or metaphorical, but basically you're yeah. singing out in the rain, mm-hmm. you get cold, you know, but obviously she loves to sing. So right. it kind of sets the whole stage there. Kind of maybe her character a little bit, mm-hmm. you know. Right. Carefree, like mm-hmm. just She's loves singing out. Singing on the ring, playing in the rain, all that stuff. Yeah. So I don't know who's playing. I just know what the doctor said. So it could be. I mean, maybe she's not actually out playing in the rain. She's, you know, she's kind of losing it yeah. at the end of her life. That's just where she would want to be, uh-huh. kind of. Like, so I don't know who's playing. So that's kind of like, yeah. You know, she doesn't really know what's going on. But right. She just wants to sing. 84 years of a sinning life, and in the morning, I'll be dead. So that's pretty dark, but you know, it's, it's crazy <sighs> yeah. to think that, like, 84 years of a sinning life. So she. What does that mean? 84 years. Well, she's, a, like she thought she felt like she was sinning the she whole time. feels like. Yeah. Like she did not make right choices in life. I don't think she thinks she was like a bad, bad person. person. Just. But of yeah. a sinning life. I mean, you're out. She's probably drinking or, you know, whatever it yeah. is. Like the spirit seems more of a, like a free spirit kind mm-hmm. of person. Just all. Not taking care of her things. Right. But then, like, in the morning, I'll be dead. So imagine just laying there knowing that you're going to be dead in the morning and you think your whole life was spent. Sinning? Sinning. Like, just, like, you didn't, you felt like you didn't lead a good life. Right. Most likely she did, but, or a decent life, in mm-hmm. ways, you know. So, um, the next but, line. Yeah. I had three daughters, a new man for every one. So. A little there, I mean, obviously, yeah, she's... I mean, she just never could settle, maybe. Yeah. Never could really settle. Not a settle. committed person. Yeah, not a very committed person. Or maybe the guys were bad. They could have I been I mean, tricks. that is... Yeah, that could have been. Probably not, though, by the way she's thinking. <laughs> and the only man that I ever loved left me with my only son. And he left that time. Yeah, so he left at that time with her own. Well, I mean, it doesn't really say that she left, but, like... No. For the daughters, I'm just saying, but she made it a point well, to it say... Says, the only man she ever loved is yeah. the one that left her. So I'm kind of guessing that maybe she didn't love the daughter's dads. Yeah, I'm sure they were just like a, well, having a good time and she got knocked up. I'm not sure she loved her kids and stuff, but it's, yeah, it doesn't, it's not like those were more just a, a fling than it was yeah. a thing. Yeah. And then. So she had four kids all together. Yep. Three four daughters kids and all a son. Yeah. So I was a no good mother. I was a no good wife. It was very, um, well, At least she can admit it. Yeah. <laughs> no, she doesn't think very highly of herself. No. And most likely, yeah, well, she might not have probably, been that bad. Well, we're probably harsher on ourselves than right, that's, uh, anybody else. So Absolutely. There's only one thing that I did right in this godforsaken life. What do you think that is? Her singing. I don't know. That's the only thing I could think of. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah. That's where she felt. At peace. And at that's, peace and at home, and that's that like really her was her lifestyle. Yeah. Yep. So then when he goes right into the chorus, so St. Peter, won't you open up the big white gate? So obviously she's thinking in heaven right now. Mm-hmm. Or like she at that would like point where you're dead, you got, you know, you get sent down or, or those let two in. Because I heard about forgiveness, and I hope it ain't too late. No, I ain't no holy roller. But you go tell your king that all the folks up in heaven might like to hear me sing. So, I mean, that's like her saving grace kind of like. Yeah, like, hey. I, have a, I have a great yeah. voice and yeah. they know, like I've, me. And she's asking for forgiveness. Like, hey, just let me in. Yeah. You know, let me, I can do this and I can do it well. Right. So, and it goes back into a verse now. I sang to my children before they strayed so far. I'm guessing once your kids were old enough to bail, they, they took bailed. off. Yeah, and... they bailed. And, like, so 
mom probably just that's all she probably knew was how to sing and maybe mm-hmm. that's just you know like they didn't go on maybe vacations because she was either touring or just always singing and right. that was it yeah so i'm guessing their kids and her didn't have the tightest of relationships no, the way they strayed so far so yeah a sing for my lover or a nickel in a tip jar so she'd sing for money she sing it sounds like she'll sing for anything she sang yeah. for her kids and she sang for a lover Sang for Nicola, it doesn't matter. She yeah, just wanted to she sing. She was gonna sing no matter what. So, I never knew Jesus. I never read the good book. So, I mean, that's just wasn't a religious person, which right? Is the case with a lot of people. Mm-hmm. But on my days, on my day of dying, I'm giving life a second look. Well, yeah, you would. Right. I mean, <laughs> that's the whole point of the song. She's looking back on her life yeah, now. She's like, like oh, crap. yeah, I. Not done well. I should have did things differently. Mm-hmm. And, you know, typical stuff that everybody would say probably in that situation. Or most people. Most Some people, people think yeah. Perfect, I mean, but. yeah. I mean, because, yeah, a lot of people probably, like, question if they know they're dying the next day. And, yes, that has been told to people. You're mm-hmm. not leaving this place. You, oh, it absolutely. will be fast. So you probably would be like, oh, Am I going up there? Am I going down there? Where am I going? Mm. Yeah. That's what. So she writes it very well. She like. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah, that's kind of, I mean, what would you think if you look back on your life right now? What have I accomplished? You know what I mean? I haven't done a whole, I mean, I haven't, you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, there's always on yourself. Yeah. If you're looking back on your, you're thinking that, I mean, it's not like I changed the world or no. something like that. You didn't cure cancer I mean, everybody wants to do something important in their life. And she lived her life, and now she's thinking the same thing. Mm -hmm. So that goes in the chorus again. St. Peter, won't you open up the big white gate? Because I heard about forgiveness, and I hope it ain't too late. No, I ain't no holy roller, but you go and tell your king that all the folks up in heaven might like to hear me sing. Yes, they would. So now back into verse. It's coming on time now. And my body's getting cold. Just imagine thinking that. That's crazy. Yeah. Man. Just thinking, sitting there like, man, I can feel myself dying. Dying, yeah. That's, oof, that's not a good thought. No. I've got no will. I've got no prayer. My story's all been told. I like that. Like, my story's all been told. That's just, to me, that's super cool. Like, verse you know as you know even though it doesn't sound like her story is the greatest <laughs> right but that's her story that's their life that's a story mm-hmm. and that's what people are going to talk about or whatever and that's i just think that's a really neat reference mm-hmm. i'm ready for the land of fire so she's ready she's thinking she's going to hell yeah she's sending life yeah really. but i love to see the land of gold there's always hope yeah always hope so nurse bring me my guitar one more song before, before i go, go. Yep. yeah so that's like yeah, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so again, goes, she's still got music on her mind that's still in her heart and that's in her soul. To her, that's the only thing that she feels that she's done right in life is her music, her, her, music, her voice. Mm-hmm. It's like singing, getting there. So that's where she finds peace, and that's St. Peter, won't you open up the big white gate? Because I heard about forgiveness, and I'm hoping it ain't too late. No, I ain't no holy roller, but you go and tell your king. That all the folks up in heaven might like to hear me sing. And all the folks up in heaven might like to hear me sing. Yep. So, the things I like about songs like this, though, is just, it makes you reflect on yourself a little bit. You know, when you think about that, like, okay. What would I do? What would I, yeah, what would I do? Or when I look back on what I've done, that makes you want to do more Mm -hmm. and live life more. And, uh, you know, stuff like that inspires you a little bit. So, it's kind of a morbid song a little bit. But then again, it kind of makes you think positively. It makes yeah, you want like, to do more with your your own life. Yeah, so you don't get to that point. And you're like, oh, man, right. I just lived a sin in life, and uh, I'm yeah. hoping that I, uh, or, I go mean, see the land of gold and not fire. Yeah, or even doesn't want to make you. I mean, just I don't want to go to work every day and come home, do nothing, sit on the couch, watch TV like every single day, mm-hmm. and then you die. And like, what did you do? What was your story? Right. So it kind of, I think it's more inspirational than anything to me. Yeah, so I can see I like that. that. But any song that can make you reflect on yourself and make you feel something right. by the story, and that's what I like. Yeah. And that's why For sure. I like the song. And she said, like, 
she said that Big White Gate was a song that she wrote for her grandma right before she passed away. So I wonder so, if... like, she was there, you know, because as family, when you have family in the um, hospital or family mm-hmm. in the, in the, you know, nursing home, and they're, and you know it's, you know, two days, three mm-hmm. days at the max or something. So that's what I'm picturing her, like, she's saying she wrote it, you know, as her grandma right before her grandma passed away so she's probably Mm -hmm. there you have a lot of time because sometimes they're in and out of it sleeping you know what i mean right so like i could just so then i'm like was did her grandma have this sinning life like Mm. was this like way direct or did it just inspire her to kind of write this song you Mm. know what i mean but like it didn't she didn't elaborate more than that but yeah i could just imagine her in the waiting room or even in the room just kind of like i'm guessing thinking and Probably, my perspective is I think she was probably influenced, you know, her grandma's dying. What would she do in that kind of, if she was in that situation? Mm-hmm. So it was probably, like, inspired by that, but then kind of her story mm-hmm. influenced, too. But it kind of makes it interesting about that one verse in there about, I don't know who's playing, you know, in the first oh yeah section. I don't know who's playing. I just know what, what the, the doctor, doctor said. said. So I wonder if, like... Maybe Grace was actually in there singing and stuff. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, it could be. It could be I mean, maybe not. I could be reading into it, but yeah. I would like to think I'm right about everything. So, <laughs> all right. So, yeah, that was interesting. So, a little mm-hmm. bit more about Grace Potter. She was born in 1983 in Vermont. She grew up in a family that encouraged her artistic pursuits in areas from music to theater the latter of which she was studying at St. Lawrence University when drummer Matt Burr heard her sing at an open mic night in 2002 and asked if she would form a band with him. She declined at first, but when another one of her music friends came to college, she reconsidered the invitation and formed Grace Potter in the Nocturnals. Which is funny because it's like, if he would have never asked her, she would have never formed I, she Like, she would have been doing music, but she wouldn't Mm. have started out with... Grace right. Potter and the Nocturnes. It's so weird how that happens. In 2003, they moved back to Vermont on Grace Potter's parents' lands to craft themselves um, and their music. They re- self-released, self-released Original Soul in 2004, which garnered major label offers, but the band preferred to build its fan base with touring and festivals. And they surely did do a lot of that because, like I said, oh, we yeah. we saw them on uh, Austin City Limits, and mm. I mean, if you look on YouTube, I mean, they were constantly at different places. Right. Um, uh, they self released "Nothing But the Water," so that's the one that I found. I love yeah. that one in two thousand and five, which is crazy because I think when we watched that um, Austin City Limits, then it must have been shortly after that, so two thousand five or mm-hmm. two thousand six. To me, it feels like it's for like ages ago, but then I'm like, two thousand. That's not that long ago, two thousand and five. Fifteen, 15 years. Fifteen years. I know. Okay. Shortly after this, they signed with Hollywood Records and recorded "This Is Somewhere" in two thousand and seven. In June two thousand and twelve, they released "The Lion, the Beast, and the Beat," which received the most attention of the Nocturnals record yet released but potter decided to go solo with her next album midnight in 2015 her last album daylight which i just purchased that one was released in 2019 which is the year she officially broke up with the nocturnals so she is no longer grace potter and the nocturnals she is just grace potter i don't i didn't buy um the Beast and the Beat, and I didn't buy the other one. There was one other one. Um, I didn't buy Midnight either. Because she kind of went more pop. I don't, yeah. I don't mind pop, but that's just not... I didn't like that. She, went, she definitely grew from the, the bluesy kind of sound. Mm-hmm. And that's what we just knew her as. So I mean, Yeah, so it was kind of when she went that route, I wasn't a big fan. But right. then... When the daylight came on, I heard it last year. I was like, "Oh, she's coming back to like mm. what I loved her as." So right. I bought that that album, and there's many songs on there that I actually which really I'm kind of bummed that she didn't have the same band. You know, cause I don't know the guitar player's name, but he was really he was really cool, and he's a really good guitar player. Mm. I like the style and stuff, but uh, I'm sure that he's probably doing something. 
Yeah. Great. I'm not sure. I mean, she's got, I mean, some of them might actually play with, she still plays. Mm -hmm. Like she's still got people with her. So it's possible that one of them stuck with her and just doing her solo stuff. Right. I don't know any but of the juicy stuff or why they broke up or anything, but maybe she the... was. Oh, am I going to get this wrong? She was she was married to one of them for a brief yeah. time. I thought it was through the guitar player. Yeah, and so. then so, but they stayed together after they divorced, mm. and she's got obviously she's now remarried to somebody else, and she's got a child. Mm. So, um, yeah, she's been doing. I've been because I follow her on Instagram, so she's been doing the Twilight Hour. So, at, like once a week. Wednesdays or something, she'll play one song in the evening time. Okay. She's back at her parents' house in Vermont, and she was complaining about the shitty internet service. So we should do move back to our parents' house and <laughs> reinvent ourselves. <laughs> that is what we're trying to do. Oh yeah, that's right. We are. Yeah, it's yeah, fun. That's, yeah. <laughs> no, that's uh. No, I mean she's she's really good. She's she's a hell of a singer, mm-hmm. you know. And I think the band was really good. And I just the first album was really good. But I can see where the pop kind of came in a little bit because, like, even on the second album, that uh, you know, like "Stop the Bus" and stuff like that. Those songs, mm-hmm. I mean, they were definitely a little more, mm-hmm. yeah, like so, not I mean... like pop, pop, but more mainstream, like mm-hmm. radio friendly stuff, and right. Because most radios aren't going to play anything that has any kind of blues. No, which is correlation sad. To it I love it though. I mean, like, yeah, I've been just... big into the blues, you know, forever. So she's got a very soulful, soulful voice, yeah. and she can hold out those tones and play with those melodies. And yeah, I mean, uh, it's kind of interesting watching her sing though, because like she'll do these weird things with her mouth. And... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, like... a lot of singers do when they yeah, really get it's into so it. So weird. Even guitar players do that and stuff. You do when you play your guitar. Yeah. You make those weird mouth things. Yeah. Awesome mouth things. Yeah. Yep. I, knew, I knew you meant to say that. Oh, yeah. So. That's right. But. Yeah. So she is really awesome. So you yep. should check her out. Um, oh, she, well, she is still doing tours right now. She just announced another one. The COVID but I tour? I think that, yeah, the COVID tour. I think one of the ones was like in a drive in theater. So, like, you drive in. With your vehicles, mm-hmm. and you get to listen to the concert that way. That would be so you cool. You can still social distance. Back up the truck or something and sit in the back. Yeah, of the truck. that would be awesome. It would be. I would do that. Mm-hmm. You know, have some jerk standing up in front of you, and yeah, you can just, just chill out. Chill out in your car, which is weird though, because I was telling Brad, I'm like, you know, like when we went to concerts, we had to like be pat down, like right. the little beeper thing, and now you can just drive in car into mm-hmm. the. And nothing's happened, so no. let's keep it that way. Absolutely. Yeah. It'd be fun to see her. I'd go again. to another concert. I'd go see her again, yeah. Yep. I just love her voice, so. Anyways, that was our episode. I hope yep. you enjoyed it. So go try the coffee beer. Yeah, try the coffee beer. You have beer. to go to Minnesota to try it. Maybe Wisconsin, but you have Maybe. to go to the north somewhere. Yeah. Come up north, it's fine. Yep. Probably do it before December. Yeah, don't come in the winter. Cool it's Beans cool. Imperial Coffee Porter. And uh, buy one of these, listen to Grace Potter. And, and have a good time. Yeah. Share our podcast. Yeah. All right, guys. Yep. See ya. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.